Hello, everyone. This is Danny from Three Kingdoms here uh, with another deck tech. Um, so this deck um, is something that uh, I've actually built uh, in the paper world. Um, I play this all the time at the store. Um, I play this, um, you know, online as well. Um, and it's actually one of my favorite decks. And um, I mean, since we're very close to rotation, I thought maybe I'd just cover one more deck uh, using some of the, uh, you know, cards that uh, that were in the older sets before uh, this deck finally rotates out. Um, but uh, this this deck that we're going to be covering today is called Sultai Reanimator. Okay, so Sultai Reanimator. I mean, it's the name itself should kind of describe um, what kind of deck this is. Um, I mean, we have a, a whole bunch of creatures uh, in this deck um, that we can. I mean, they're fairly cheap to cast um, and uh, are pr pr almost you know most of the most powerful creatures um, in the standard Magic world today. So we have, uh, for example. Uh, we have Gifted Etherborn, okay, like two black mana, you know, gives you a 2-3 death touch with lifelink. I mean, what more can you ask for? It, this is probably one of the better um, uh, uncommon cards uh, in the, in this particular set or in standard today. Uh, we're also running three of uh, Glint Sleeve Siphoners. Okay, it's great card draw. I know we have, you know, Chain Whirler out there that can get rid of these, you know, um, uh, uh, one um, toughness creatures, but I mean, it's still a good card, right? I mean, if, if you if you're able to get Glint Sleeve out there um, and play playing that along with the Ether Hub, you can get two energy right off the bat and be able to draw a card the following turn. So, Glint, I included Glint Sleeve Siphoner in there, and it also helps that you know if if they can't kill it. Um, it also has menace, so it can get in for a couple of damage every turn um, if uh, if the opponent isn't able to find an answer for it. Okay, so those two are great, uh, great creatures, great two drops uh, in the Sultai Reanimator deck. Um, I've also included uh, Thrashing Brontodon in here as well. Now, Thrashing Brontodon, I have two copies of uh, of it in this deck because mainly uh, I needed to get rid of enchantments and 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 those pesky artifacts. Okay, um, and plus. You know, with, with it being a three drop, it's a three four, so it kind of you know um, lives and survives um, you know off of abrades, off of you know lightning strikes, off of you know any of the the current standard removal. Like it, it lives through shocks, so like this is a pretty you know hefty creature that can that can survive a lot of the removal that's out there. Um, I've also included uh, four champion of wits. Okay, now. Um, Champion of, of Wits, you'll understand why I, I included it in here uh, in this deck. And the re main reason is because it has the Eternalize ability, right? So I can, you know, pay seven mana and then have it come back as a 4-4, four, four, being able to draw four cards and then discard two cards. So it's a great card draw engine. Uh, plus, it, I can reanimate it without any of my other reanimation uh, spells. So those are the, the smallish creatures. Now, let's talk about some of the larger creatures on, and higher on the curve. So I have two hostage takers, great for, you know, great answers for all the gods that are out there, right? Any of the gods, any of, any of the creatures that you can't outright kill, you use hostage, hostage taker, you know, take them hostage and then recast them on your turn. So that's a great card. And then I also included one copy of Gaunti in here. I mean, we're playing Sultai, right? We're, we're, we're having black, so why not? Gaunti's a great card. I mean, it's for, a four, for a four drop, getting a two, three death touch plus the ability to, to be able to cast your opponent's cards um, is, is a great uh it's, it's a great ability now to some of our finishers um far on the right okay so here we have two scarab gods okay obviously if we're reanimating something scarab god is great for that and it's 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 great on the curve because it's, it's five mana um and i mean there's nothing else more to say about the scarab god i mean it, it just absolutely must be included in this deck um i also have two liliana death's majesty again from a reanimation perspective i can always um, target a creature that's in the graveyard and then bring it back onto the battlefield using her minus three ability, right? Um, and then her ultimate's good as well if, if she ever does get to ultimate. But mainly, what we want to do is we want to, you know, create some chump blockers, you know, create some 2 2 black zombies, or we bring a creature back from the graveyard. Now, um, some of our some of our, our bigger pieces, and I think it's the, the key to this deck is um, Moldrotha. Right, Modrotha, Modrotha, the Grave Tide allows you to cast anything from your graveyard, um, um, like sorry, any uh, permanent, any type of permanent from your graveyard once for, uh, per turn. 
like per your turn. So, um, so during your turns, you're able to cat, you know, bring back a land from the graveyard, or you're able to, you know, uh, cast a, a walking ballista as a creature, or you can cast a walking ballista as an artifact, right? So you can, or you can cast a Liliana uh, if somebody kills her, you know, from the graveyard. So Modrotha again is the linchpin and the key to uh, to this deck. Now I only have two of of Modrotha in here because it's a legendary creature, and you definitely don't want to be holding Modrotha at the beginning of your um, you know, of, of the game. You want to draw into Modrotha, so which is why we, we only have two copies. And um, a couple of Raskas, right? Raska Relic Seekers. Again, it's a great card, can get rid of a lot of different things, can create chump blockers, and her ultimate's great as well. And then finally, I have a couple of Walking Ballistas in here, which, I mean... You can use it as removal, right? You you cast it, let's say, on four mana, and then you ping something for two, and then you can use uh, Modrotha to recast Walking Ballista back from the graveyard. So it's a continuous uh, removal spell that you can use uh, from the graveyard over and over and over again. Okay? Now let's talk a little bit about the sideboard. So um, since we're playing blue, um, if we're up against a uh, counter spell, you know, uh, type of deck, um, I, I included a couple, couple of negates. I included some duresses in there as well for for decks that you know usually don't have creatures or or, or want to play uh, a controly type of you know type of game style. Uh, and then doomfalls are, are great is is great in this deck because you can remove a creature or you can remove a card uh, from uh, your opponent's hand. Um, some uh, some uh, an extra copy of Raska's Contempt, and then a couple of Bantu's Last Reckonings. Now, as you can see, like a, a lot of our you know cards, um, it, it's not very big, right? They're not very very big creatures, right? So um, if if uh, if you have uh, an opponent that goes wide on you, it's very difficult for us to go and uh, and you know and, and fight against that deck. So having Bantu's Last Reckoning is just a way to kind of you know as a sweeper just sweep away the board. Uh, and then finally, a couple of uh, sorcerer's spy, spy glasses, so that you know, if you if you're fighting against a deck that's very strong on uh, on planeswalkers or or any card that has has an activated ability. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's uh, this is the Salt Tai Reanimator deck that I play all the time. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, to come come by the store, drop by the store, and uh, and you can ask me, you know, how you know what works, what doesn't work, and also you can come by to pick up the cards to build this deck. All right. Uh, this is Danny from Three Kingdoms. Uh, hope you guys have uh, have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye.